Hi, I'm Jason Peacock. Today I'm going to talk about Guards of Atlantis. This game is meant to emulate a mobile style video game. That's where you control a hero and there's legions of brainless minions running around fighting, getting hacked up, that sort of thing. Another game that tries to do this is Rum and Bones by Cool Mini or Not. This game definitely sets itself apart, and the two games don't really have much in common, other than getting their inspiration from MOBA-style games. This game is from a new designer, Artyom Nichiparov, and publisher, Wolf Designer. I really like that name, it's got a good ring to it, Wolf Designer. This is a tactics battle game. There are minions on the board, but they are there to passively modify attack and defense stats. But this game is all about controlling the heroes. The thing that stands out about this particular battling game is that there are no dice. This game is all strategy. The heart of the game are these cards. Each of the nine characters have their own unique deck. That's right, nine players. And like I said, each deck is unique, so each hero has their own moves and abilities. A smart thing they did was to make two weaker characters, these two eight-men dudes, um, equal to the strength of one regular hero, so the odd player team uses the two ape guys. Each hero has five cards available to them. Um, one of them in all, is always a hold card, which is effectively a pass, and then there's attack, a basic attack, a defense, and a skill card. There are four turns in each game round. Each turn, a player places a card face down. When all the cards are placed, the cards get flipped up, and whoever has highest initiative gets to go first, this number in the top left corner. Everyone starts doing one of the actions on their cards. You can either use it to move, this boot symbol on the side, or use the attack or the skill listed on it. The game is won by pushing the lane, as it's called, into the enemy throne room. So once all the enemies or minions are killed in a zone, all the minions from the board and the ones already removed get reset up in the next region closer to the throne room. It's this constant tug of war that creates really interesting decisions on whether to heal, kill a hero or a minion. Everything has one hit point in this game, but the heroes do have a chance to respond to an attack by playing a card from their hand with one of these shield icons on it. That's the only time the shields matter is when you play it from your hand. If you only have a hold card left in your hand, or a card without shields, you are essentially def defenseless and are dead with any hit. When you die, you start back at your throne room at the second card played of the next turn. But there is a fast travel rule where if there's nobody in your zone or the one adjacent to it, any move icon can move you to any space in either of those zones. So the values on the attack card do matter when attacking a hero. They've got to play a card with a shield icon plus the modifiers that equal or match the strength of the attack. And for each enemy minion you're next to, you lose one off your defense. For each friendly minion you're next to, you get to add one to your defense. Now I mentioned that you only have five cards to play during your turn. However, as the game progresses, you get gold from killing heroes and killing minions. At the end of the four cards played, one game turn, you can level up your character. Now there's three tiers of cards to level up. You have to level everything up to level two before you can go up to level three. But each of the different colors has two options available. The card you choose replaces the tier one that you started with and the card you don't choose becomes a bonus for you for the rest of the game. So if I wanted to level up this level 1 card, Gush of Water, I could choose either Violet Torrent or High Tide. Both of these level 2 cards, if I pick Violet Torrent, then High Tide gets tucked under my player board and I would get the Lookout Spyglass item, which gives me plus 1 range on everything with range for the rest of the game. 
So that's basically how the game plays, in a nutshell, which lasts between 60 and 90 minutes. Epic games could run longer with a constant back and forth, but there is a variant where you just keep track of the amount of times you push the lane. Once you reach the predetermined amount of tower tokens, then you win the game that way. This wasn't the easiest game to pitch to my game group. Uh, nobody's eyes lit up when I was talking about it or explaining it, that's for sure. But after a couple of game rounds, everyone caught on pretty quick um, and got the hang of it. It's going to be really easy to get back to the table again, that's for sure. There is a lot to like about this game. I didn't mention it, but the board is double-sided. One side for 2-6 to six players and the other side from 6-10 to ten players. I like that all the players play and feel different. I like the leveling up and choosing how to develop your hero as the game progresses. I like how there's a good choice of both male and female characters to control, especially with the expansion, which adds two characters and lets you play up to 11 players. I've been trying to get my hands on that expansion uh, unsuccessfully thus far. Mostly, I like the strategy and tactics that this game offers, and that opens up big time once you get familiar with the characters you're controlling and the ones your opponents are using, and you can plan for possible moves that you're anticipating. I love the wonderful decisions that this game offers. Do I kill a minion or do I attack a hero? That is a big decision on almost every situation when it arises. I'm really happy with the card art in this game. Every single deck of cards features art with that character. Even the hold cards are all individual and pertain to that character. I love the team versus team dynamic. It's not all that common in games, and if you can think of any where uh, groups of players each play on a different team and they control heroes, I would love to hear about it because I love this dynamic of a game. The minis are alright, they're not the best, but I like the game enough where I will get around to painting them. They are better than Cry Havoc, but way below Blood Rage as far as the quality goes. I play this game two player, but I did find it underwhelming at two. I think this game shines when you have team versus teams. I think that's the heart of the game. However, I haven't completely written off two player. I'll give it another chance when I'm playing with someone that's familiar with their character and the game and just see if that opens up for me and pulls me in. But I'm pretty met on the two player. This is a game that I would play any time. I love the decisions. I love the team dynamic. I love the leveling up, the uniqueness of the characters. It is a winner. And I feel it has flown under the radar, seeing as it's from a new publisher and new designer. However, I will say this. RDM Nichiparov and Wolf Designer has my attention, and I will have my ears perked at whatever they decide to do next. So that is Guards of Atlantis from Wolf Designer. Two to nine players, 11 with the expansion. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Peacock, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.